In this video, we're going to talk about how to um, find the circle equation of a circle in general form and then how to take it from general form to standard form. So recall that in the last video, if you watched it, that an equation of a circle in standard form is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equal r squared. And so you can go from standard form to general form by multiplying this out, simplifying, and getting zero on one side. So for example, if you had an equation of a circle, say x minus y, 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equal to 8, this is the standard form. If I wanted to put it in the general form, I could simply do that by multiplying this out. So x minus 1 squared is the same as x minus 1 times x minus 1. And y minus 2 squared is the same as y minus 2 times y minus 2. So in order to figure out what this is, I need to FOIL it out. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is minus 1x, which is just minus x. Negative 1 times x is also negative x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. And then I will also need to FOIL the y minus 2's out. y times y is y squared. y times negative 2 is negative 2y. Negative 2 times y is another negative 2y, and negative 2 times negative 2 is a plus 4. And now go through and combine your like terms. So negative x and negative x is minus 2x. So bring down the 1, bring down the y squared, and minus 2y, and minus 2y is minus 4y. And so I'm going to write them in order now, write it in order with the highest exponents first. So x squared first, then I'm going to write my y squared next, then I'm going to write the ones that have an exponent of 1, so my x by itself and my y by itself, and then I'm going to combine my numbers together, so 1 plus 4, which is 5, and so your general form also has to have 0 on one side, so I'm going to move the 8 over, and I have to combine the 8 with the 5, so I'm subtracting 8 over here. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side of the equal sign. So that leaves me with x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 4y. 5 minus 8 is minus 3 equals 0. And so this is the equation of this circle, one with the center of 1, 2, and a radius of the square root of 8. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But that's the equation of that circle in general form. So it's just basically taking the standard form and expanding it out. So that's your general form or your general form of an equation of a circle. So the next thing we're going to be interested in is taking an equation that's in general form and turning it to standard form. So when it's in general form, it's of no use to us, basically. But if we could put it in standard form, then we could easily look at the equation of the circle and see what the center is and what the radius is. So for this next example, we're going to take the equation of a circle in general form. We're going to put it in center radius form or standard form. We're going to take this equation, x squared plus y squared plus 10x minus 6y plus 25 equals 0. It's in general form. It's the equation of a circle in general form, and we're going to put it in standard form. And so the way we have to do that is we have to use completing the square. So I'm going to go through and tell you how to do it step by step. So for step one, what you want to do is you want to group your x's together, group your y's together, and you want to move the constant term to the other side. So what I mean by that is put your x's in parentheses, so x squared plus 10x. Put your y's in parentheses together, y squared minus 6y. And then you want to move the constant term, which is 25, to the other side. And you do that by subtracting 25. And so whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So that's step one. Group your x's together, group your y's together, and move the constant term to the other side. The next thing you want to do, step two, is you want to complete the square in each group. So recall, completing the square means you take, you're take you creating a perfect square trinomial, and you do that by taking half of the B term, that's the term that's in the middle, and squaring it and adding that value to each um, side, basically. So when you complete the square, you also have to balance the equation. So that's why I say add it to each side. So it looks like this. So in this group, the B term is the 10, right? So that's the term that's in front of the x. So you want to take half of 10 
and square it. Well, half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So in order to make this a perfect square trinomial, I will need to add 25 in this parentheses. And in order to balance the equation, whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side. So I need to come over here and add 25 as well on the right side of the equation. All right, now for this group, this set of parentheses, the B term is the negative six. So if I take half a negative six and square it, half a negative six is negative three and square it, I get nine. So add nine to both um, this side, the left side, and also add nine to the right side. And so that's the second step. You've, we've completed the square in each group, meaning we've created a perfect square trinomial here and a perfect square trinomial here. And the whole purpose of creating a perfect square trinomial is to rewrite each group as something squared. And so the next step, the third step, is you want to factor each of those parentheses or basically rewrite each parentheses as a perfect square trinomial and so this will end up being this variable x whatever this sign is plus and whatever half of this number is so if you remember when we did completing the square before that will always factor into this variable that sign and half of that number squared so that's x plus 5 squared another way you can think of it is what are two numbers that multiply to give me 25 but add to give me 10. Two numbers that multiply to give you 25 and add to give you 10, that will be five times five and five plus five. So those two factors are five and five. So that would be x plus five times x plus five. But instead of writing it out twice, you write it as x plus five squared. And so over here in this parentheses, this will factor into that variable y, that sign minus and half of six, which is three y minus 3 squared. Again, if you want to think of it as factoring, it's what two numbers multiply to give you 9 and add to give you negative 6. That's negative 3 and negative 3. Again, instead of writing it as y minus 3, y minus 3, you write it as y minus 3 squared. And then on the right side, you want to simplify. That means um, add these together. Negative 25 plus 25, that's 0, plus 9 is 9. And so after you do that step, you have the equation of the circle in standard form or center radius form. And now you can easily look at this and see what is the center and what is the radius of the circle. So, so just recall that the form, the standard form of the equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equal r squared. So this number right here will give you your h. So the sign should be negative. So whenever it's in parentheses, you're always going to take the opposite sign. So since this says plus 5, your h is going to be a negative 5. Since this says minus 3, your k is going to be a positive 3. And so since this is r squared, r squared is 9, then r is going to be the square root of 9 which is 3. Your radius is going to be 3. And so I took the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. You usually take the positive and negative, but since we're talking about radius, you cannot have a negative radius. So you only take the positive square root. So you get this equation in standard form with the center being negative 5 comma 3 and the radius being 3. So that's how you go from general form to standard form for the equation of a circle. Okay, so now you try this one. Here's the equation of a circle in general form. Now you take it and see if you can write it in standard form. So pause the video for a moment and give it a try. See if you can go back through those steps we just went through in the last example. All right, so the first thing you should do is group your x's together. So put your x squared plus 12x in parentheses together. And then group your y's together. Put your y squared minus 14y in parentheses together and then move the constant term to the other side. So you're going to subtract 84 from both sides and get negative 84 on the right side. The next step you should have done is you should have completed the square in each parentheses in each group. You complete the square by taking half of the B term and squaring it. So your B here is 12. So take half of 12 and square it. Half of 12 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So here 
in this first set of parentheses, you want to add 36 in order to make it a perfect square. And whatever you do to one side, you also have to do to the other side. So that's a negative 84 plus 36. And now you complete the square here. Your B term is negative 14. Half a negative 14 squared. Half a negative 14 is negative 7 squared. And you get 49. So you want to add 49 in this set of parentheses. And you also want to add 49 to the other side because whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So now we've created perfect squares in each set of parentheses. So now rewrite each perfect square, or we've created perfect square trinomial. So now rewrite each parentheses as a perfect square trinomial. So this will become that variable, that sign, and half of 12, which is 6 squared. This one will become that variable y, that sign minus, and half of 14, which is 7 squared. And then simplify over here. 36 and 49 is 85. 85 minus 84 is 1. And so here is your equation of the circle in standard form. So hopefully that's what you got. And then if you have to identify the center, the center is going to be the opposite sign. So negative 6, the opposite sign here, positive 7. And then the radius is going to be the square root of that number, 1 which is just 1. So your center would be the point negative 6, 7, and your radius would be 1. How did you do? Did you get it? Hopefully you got it right. Alrighty, if not, make sure you go back through the steps again. Try to do the whole problem again. So just erase everything you did if you got it wrong and do it all over again and see if you can work through it. Um, if you have any questions at all, remember Feel free to put them in the comments. I get a notification whenever you comment on my video. So it comes straight to my phone. So I will definitely respond if you um, ask a question. And then by now you should have already subscribed to the channel. Um, and if you hit the bell, um, you'll also get a notification every time I upload a new video. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you'll know when I upload new content as well. And feel free to ask your questions. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I love to do. So I love math. I can do math in my sleep. So until next time, I will see you in the next video. Thanks.